They say I might as well face the truth But I am just too long in the tooth So I'm an OAP and weak knee But I have not yet quite gone to see I may be over the hill now that I have retired Fading away but I'm not yet expired Clapped out, run down, too old to say One foot in the grave Two special fried rice and two sweet and sour chicken balls. Ten minutes. Thank you, sir. Bye. Ani, how did you look at that Facebook? Where are you from? 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 Where So long as it's established, I'm not happy with the arrangement, that's all. Have you seen this? They found a mummified caveman inside a block of ice in Siberia. Perfectly preserved, he's over 12,000 years old. It's a spitting image of Mr. Meldrew. I've forgotten what he did with that tortoise that was entrusted to his care. Ran straight out the back and started toasting it on a garden fork. <laughs> a little bugger. We might just sort of go away for the week and ask the Terminator to come in and water our plants. It's a little lot easier. Did you hear me? Look! Where? Next to the advert! I can see the picture of Mr. Meldrew. Where's the mummified cave girl? <laughs> I told you not to go to that one by the canal. They've had the pest controller in there three times this year, to my knowledge. Pest controller? Need the pipe piper of heaven. <laughs> and I notice those women are still hanging about in there. Might as well stick a red light over the front door and be done with it. What? Prostitutes? Prostitutes? I didn't know whose price list to ask for first. <laughs> Skirts up to their nostrils. You know damn well they're not waiting for crispy duck. <laughs> yeah, I've got evidence against them on both counts this time. What evidence? Exhibits A and B. I see the trading standard department has to say about that. Hardly no one was wearing them. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Oh, by the way, your brother Alfred phoned from the airport. He says he wants to do a bit of shopping in London tomorrow. He'll get here about three. Sounded a bit dopey. It sounds jet lag, I expect. Well, that would be jet lag. He's always dopey. You see, when you ring him up, his voice sounds as distant as anything, and he can't hear a word you're saying. Well, that's because it's an international line. That's because he's holding the phone upside down. <laughs> I told you, if you ever wonder what it was like to be trapped in a house with Stan Laurel for two weeks, you're about to find out. Well, you can at least make a bit of effort while he's here. I would have thought, after 25 years, he'd be thrilled to bits. You lose touch with people, Margaret. We've nothing in common anymore. Look, it's just one of those awful family rituals where you're both too embarrassed to act. No! Oh, I hope you're not interrupting. 
just thought um, we'd drop the keys round and talk you through a couple of things for next week. Oh, right. Well, I'll come through to the sitting room. I'll get my notepad. We're all at sixes and sevens ourselves here because Victor's brother is over from New Zealand. Uh, just leave us from the Oh! <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so you've got your computer, yeah? You've got your database software package, your laser printer, your fax, your photocopier, and your cartridges. Oh, and we mustn't forget your warranty agreement, must we? Memo, get Samantha to organize a three-year extended warranty agreement for Mr. Victor Meldrew on his M240 computer package. Okay, then. I just need three signatures from you and uh, a small check, I'm afraid. <laughs> right. Uh, how much was it again? £7,962.55. <laughs> oh, and we mustn't forget your service contract, must we? Uh, Memo, get Samantha to organise a service agreement for Mr Victor Meldrew, two years from date of purchase. Oh, lovely wallpaper, I must say. That's magic, sir. Thank you very much. I'll just give you a receipt. What's this? Is this some sort of joke or what? A joke, sorry? The signature. It says, you daft, dawdling old asshole." <laughs> uh, no, I think that's what you called me last week, wasn't it? Where you nearly carved me up in that dual carriageway? Last week. <laughs> I was driving along a steady 50 when you suddenly shot up my backside in your company Sierra, flashed your lights and virtually ran my back bumper for three miles. When you did overtake, that's what you shouted through the passenger window. <laughs> Noting your firm's details in the car door, I took the liberty of inviting you around here today, just so as I could deliberately waste your time for the best part of an entire morning. I knew I'd seen your face before. I thought it was that mummified caveman in the papers. <laughs> I have five other appointments this morning. Oh, well, I'd better get through this. Memo. <laughs> get Samantha to organize a new brain for me as quickly as possible, <laughs> where I can learn to drive and not be a complete bastard to everyone else in the world. <laughs> I can just bugger off out of it if you'd be so kind. <laughs> and your wallpaper stinks. <laughs> Again. You'll come a copper one of these days, carrying on like a one-man vigilante patrol. Just going to give the front lawn a wee trim. Uh, are you sure you don't want me to pick up Alfred this afternoon? No, no, I'm going in anyway. I think I'll recognize him. Well, if you've any trouble, I look for a man wearing a small grey hat, smoking a pipe, who's forgotten to put his trousers on. <laughs>
Bruce. My sister's phone number. It's an uh, emergency. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's pretty run of the mill stuff, really. He was marrying the front room car. Not normal for him on a Monday, isn't it? Probably planting begonias in the video recorder by now. <laughs> As we speak. I suppose that packet of condoms in a mouse trap was still lying on the cheese. I'm afraid it was. <laughs> well, I'm going to take a good look at the house, darling. Could be the last time you see us in its present form. <laughs> Auntie Gertie escaped again the other week. <laughs> yes, you said in your last letter. Sorry? You said so in your last letter. I don't think I did, did I? Yes, you did, yes. Sorry? Yes, you did. Sure? Yes, I'm sure. I don't think I said she'd actually escaped. I said she tried to escape. No, you said she'd actually escaped, but they managed to capture her again by dropping a large net from a helicopter. <laughs> I, I don't remember telling you that. But how would I know about it then? Sorry? <laughs> how do I know about it? Right. As this is a special occasion, I thought we might push the boat out for a change and have a little glass of something. Yeah. Uh, not with the barbiturates, I won't. Thank you, Margaret. Oh, right. But it, you know it gives me click. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, here's to you both, anyway. Cheers. Cheers. So how are you coping now, Victor? Bit of a big one, isn't it? Retirement, suddenly being thrown onto the scrap heap of life. A prisoner in your own home with no prospects, no purpose. Nothing left to live for. It's not getting you down, I hope. <laughs> no, not at all. Most of the time I sit in that chair over there all day long, just laughing. <laughs> Doing cartwheels in the stairs with sheer delight. <laughs> Margaret will tell you. And I'm not retired, I'm just between jobs. Sorry? Oh, God, I'll go and get a parrot. <laughs> the moment I heard the news, I said to Marion, I've got to save up to go back there. His life was miserable and empty enough to start with. <laughs> He'll need me there to cheer him up. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, now, here you are. Large as life. Now, you find you have to be more philosophical about things now, Victor. Not be so hot-headed. Yes, that sound is place, coming from a man who could go with his hat on fire. <laughs> you mustn't get suicidal. Who's suicidal? Sorry? Who's suicidal? <laughs> well, no use pretending, is it? You've been looking gloomy and fed up since the minute I said put inside your house. 
Yes, funny that. <laughs> you know what you mean I got here just at the right moment. Excuse me, just a second, would you? <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, I'm a... What the hell's he up to this time? <laughs> Sounds like someone turning the barbican down. <laughs> I can't take much more of this. It's like having Mad Max round to stay. <laughs> Going in the morning and buy some tranquilizer darts at this rate. <sighs> Don't tell me he accidentally napalmed his underpants. <laughs> this time. Said he got up to go to the loo and saw this weird man coming towards him wearing a ghostly shroud. Hurled the alarm clock at him in a panic and then realized it was the mirror on the wardrobe. <laughs> I said I'll sweep it up in the morning and to watch where he treads. Two whole weeks we've got of this. I'm not going to be able to last the course. I swear it. Two whole weeks. Halfway. Mm, I might just make it yet. Where is it? Voice activated setting, that's the one. I'm back. Where have you been? I thought you'd flush yourself down the toilet in error. <laughs> Sorry? Where have you been? I thought you'd flush yourself down the toilet in error. <laughs> What's that for? Because I'm tired of having to repeat myself every time I say something to you. Sorry? <laughs> Every time I say something to you. If you spoke up a bit in the first place, I might be able to hear you. Never did open your mouth properly. Oh, did you get your parcel from the post office? What parcel's this then? I was going to bring it over myself, but you know how things get broken on planes? So I sent it air mail. <laughs> what I'd be interested in. You know I've been doing quite a bit of research into our ancestry down there. Our great-great-grandfather was a New Zealander, of course. Well, last year, I got a letter from a Mrs. Glenister in Christchurch, who was a very distant cousin, apparently. Said she had come into possession of some of great great grandpa Meldrew's personal effects, and would I be interested? Now, bear in mind, this item is over 150 years old, and it's very delicate. And I think you'll find it rather fascinating. <laughs> What is it? It's his skull. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, when I first laid eyes on it, I couldn't believe the family resemblance. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? The line of the foreign, particularly. They, they could be twins. <laughs> There is a certain likeness, now you point it out, especially down this side. For goodness sake, last week I was a mummy by cape and I'm a bloody walking skeleton. <laughs> I, I brought some of those photos over as well. I thought we might have a look through after tea. Not sure which case I put them in now. This is a charming little keepsake, isn't it? That's a walking disaster area. And you wondered why I didn't want him to come and stay with us? You think the day he flew out, New Zealand must have declared a national holiday. Never take it on us, brothers, even when we were young. Just think you'd have got a message by now. What message? In the name of God, go. <laughs> and that apparently was Granny Gosling when she was in service for the Duke of Norfolk. Uh, Granddad, second from the right. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that your mother she's holding? Yeah, yeah she'd have been about six months old, there. Eh? Oh. Well, I don't uh, want to seem rude, but um, I think I'm going to have to go up. I'll leave you two to your memories. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Alfred. Yes, uh, good night, Margaret. Huh. You remember this? Church parade. Armistice Day, 1937. I was in the Scouts, you were in the Wolf Cubs. Mum drew rings round our faces. 
We were tickled pink in those days to see our photos in the paper. And that was when we were still living in Dibley Street. You remember? The five of us in that little terraced house at the top of the hill. The smell of Dad's homemade beetroot wine festering in the scullery. They reckon it used to knock budgies off their perch up to three streets away. <laughs> yes, and our bedroom was right over the top of it. Yeah, and you, you remember that special way Granny used to have of cooking the Brussels that made them taste as if they'd been boiled in soap? <laughs> yes, the very thought of it makes you feel quite sick. Mm. Mm. My God, who's that? It was you. November the 3rd, 1936. You're right, I do look like a skeleton. No, I, I think you're wearing a Guy Fawkes mask. <laughs> oh, yes, so I was. I remember that year. Wasn't that when the Catherine wheel fell off of the fence onto my school cap and everyone could see it except me? And I went around with my hat on fire. <laughs> Would you like another bit of lemon? Yes, that would be nice. Thank you. Excuse me, love. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. You couldn't do us a massive favour. We've just finished relaying the pavement around the back here and it needs a good hosing down. Get rid of the mess. Do you think I could just boil your tap for a few minutes? Yes, yes, that'd be right. Cheers. Now, there is no doubt at all in your mind, is there? It was definitely him. I told you, Melanie saw him do it. Said he was an old geezer in a cap. Looked like that mummified caveman in the paper. <laughs> right. We'll see how he likes nasty things being put through his letterbox. Well through. I'll go and turn it on. Alpha, you up yet, or do you want this in bed? What's he wandered off to then? It's not even nine o'clock yet. He's gone. Gone? Gone where? Gone home. Gone? What's this? After you went to bed last night, he came downstairs for a drink and accidentally knocked that dictaphone onto the floor. You didn't wonder why they wanted to come and stay with us. To think the day he flew out was here, it must have declared a national holiday. We never dickered on his brothers, even when we were young. If we had got the message by now. What message? The name of God, go! <laughs> Ralph, cheer up. Like he says in his letter, it'll be another 25 years before he bothers you again. To open my eyes, yeah? It's fine. Everything's in one piece, exactly as we left it. Mm -hmm. I told you it'd be all right. Not for that. <clears throat> well, I'm overwatered after all. I'm dreading coming back and finding the whole.
good week. Sorry, Miss Mulder. I think you were good. Something the matter? There was one slight small question that was bothering me, yes, but I don't suppose it really matters much one way or the other. What question is that? I was just wondering how you're going to get the end of this hose pipe out of your bottom. <laughs> They say I'm not as one face the truth, but I'm just too wrong in the tooth. I started to deteriorate. I might as well face the truth, but I am just too long in the tooth. So I'm an OAB and we need, but I'm not yet quite gone to see. I may be over the hill now that I have retired, fading away, but I'm not yet expired. Wiped out, run down, too old to save, one foot in the grave. Two special fried rice and two sweet and sour chicken balls. Ten minutes. Thank you, sir. Bye. Ani, how did you get that five Thank you very much. 